You might be starting your first concept art job and you feel lost and scared to make mistakes that might get you fired. Well, I made these mistakes so that you don't have to do them as well and take the risk to lose a job that you worked so hard to get. In this video, we'll talk about the most common mistakes young and sometimes too confident concept artists make on their first job and how to avoid them. For those of you that are new to this channel, my name is Yari Lillebold, concept artist and I worked for two years in a video game studio in Belgium and I already worked on two double A games, Games of Sherwood and Outcast. Too. I also sell tutorials and courses to help you improve in your art and if you want to check that out the link is in the description. So let's get right into the mistakes that I made and to keep you from getting distracted by my pretty face is the process video of a little portrait sketch. Make sure to stick to the end of this video because I will give you a little secret tip to make good impression on your art director. The first big mistake young concept artists would make, and I did this one too, I was young and cocky, and this mistake is letting your ego get in the way. And if you were way too confident like I was, you may think that you know better than your art director and that the feedbacks he gave you are wrong. But trust me on this, just keep your mouth shut and get to work. Your job is only Need to do what your art director tells you to do. It's not your project, it's his project. Of course, you can politely say and in a non-direct way why you think some other design choices would be better than the one he chose to go with. But you need to know that generally he's not going to trust you or listen to you as much as a senior concept artist that has many more years of experience than you. The more willing you are to apply the feedbacks given to you, the faster you will improve. Another mistake that I used to make was to be impatient. When you are a junior concept artist and you start on your first job, chances are that you will have to design stuff that doesn't seem really important, like small props for example. And it's going to be very frustrating, at least it was for me, because I could see my colleagues working on the main characters or on very important landscapes and I was like, I want to try also to do that, I want to prove myself, I know I can design a main character. But when you are a junior concept artist, people won't let you do that, unfortunately. So you have to be really patient and know that in the beginning, you are just going to work on stuff that doesn't seem really important or exciting to you. But you have you always remember that you have to be patient and put in your best effort, no matter how unimportant the task seems to be. You need to strive for excellence in whatever you work on. And before you know it, you will work on important characters. So after having worked for a bit more than a year in this studio, I finally had the chance to design one of the main bosses of Games of Sherwood. And this is the final design I came up with. It was a real challenge, but I was really happy to be able to prove that I could do it. Another huge mistake that junior concept artists might make is to not take advantage of the knowledge and the experience of your colleagues. You need to see your first job as a mentorship. You need to show that you want to learn. You need to ask as many questions as you can to your more experienced colleagues and learn the techniques and way of solving visual problems. Like for me, the other concept artist I was working with, Rafael Villegas, was working a lot in Blender and I had never really used Blender before. So it took some time to explain to me the basics of how Blender works, how it can be really useful to create new landscape very quickly with that. And I got better a lot quicker than if I had to learn on my own. When your art director gives you a certain task, like designing a new character, you might think, okay, I got it, and you rush into the task. But you need to make sure that you understand the task perfectly and that you understand the intentions of your art director. This is important for artists of all levels. If the art brief of your art director is not clear enough, you need to get into the habit of asking as many questions as possible on the task you were given. If you don't do that, you take the risk of having a misunderstanding between the intentions of your art director and what you think you understand from the task. I've had a case where my art director wants me to design a character but doesn't give me much information about it and it's my job then to ask him specific questions about this character to make sure we are on the same page because if you create something that is completely different from the art director's initial intentions you will have to start again and this will cause delays on the production and you will have to rush your next task which is never good and once you are clear with the intentions of your art director now it's time to do your own research on the subject let's say that you need to design samurai character well you need to take a lot of references on samurai armors and samurai clothing, but oftentimes visual references are not enough. Because all the other artists before you that needed to create a samurai character most likely found the same visual references as you did. So you need to do some background researches on the history of samurais, on their culture, on why they dress a certain way, of their way of living. The more you know about a certain subject, the more you will be free to be creative with it. Otherwise, if you don't have enough information about them, most likely your designs will look unoriginal and a bit generic. Basically, your first concept art job is not going to be easy at all. It's mostly going to be very frustrating. And also you need to be prepared that the work that you created in the first few years of being in the concept art industry 
you will not want to post it when you are able to because you are still at a time where you improve a lot and it was the case for me. I can show just a few images I did for Games of Sherwood, but I'm not really that proud of them in the end. Because for one, I think they were rushed, we didn't have the time to really polish them and make the best and most original contests possible, and there's also the fact that I improved a lot since I made them, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the case for you also. So you have to know that there are a lot of chances that no one is ever going to see your work that you do professionally. And that's why it's so important to have your personal project on the side that you can post whenever you want. And so like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm going to give you a little and simple trick that is going to make good impression on your art director. So it's not going to work all the time, but it's worth trying out. Oftentimes in the studio I worked at, I don't know if it's the case in all studios, but my art director was giving me a task like creating a character and he would ask me how long did I think the task would take me to complete and oftentimes the best thing to do in this situation is to say that it's going to take a little bit more than the time it would take you in reality. So if you need to design a character and you know it's going to take you only three days, just say that it's going to take you five days. So when you're done after three days, your art director is going to be really happy that you did your work in less time that was scheduled and that's going to make a really good impression. Of course you cannot do that all the time but it's worth trying to do that once or twice so that you just create a good relationship with your art director. So that's a little secret that you have to keep between you and I. So if you found this video useful, you need to check out this one where I give you 10 tips to paint better characters. 